What's up everybody, I'm Just Preet Singh and there's a lot of uncertainty out there right now. You have some people talking about how we're about to enter a recession and how things are going to get much worse and other people are saying no, things are getting better. You don't got to worry about inflation and you don't even have to worry about a recession. Like on one hand, we have inflation hurting the major retailers, meaning that now they can't keep raising the price of their products and it's causing their profits to drop because inflation is eating into their margins. That's not good news for inflation and our cost of living. But now at the same time, because people don't have the ability to go ahead and buy more stuff, we're seeing more and more retailers have a surplus of inventories that they can't sell. So now what are they doing? Well, now they're turning to discounts to start getting rid of their stuff because they just don't have the ability to sell it at their current prices. A lot of people are trying to guess what's happening. They're trying to guess what's going to happen with inflation. They're trying to guess what's going to happen with the economy. And now they're trying to make a prediction based off of that. Now, what I want you to do is not try to guess what's going to happen. Not try to guess what's going to happen in the economy. Not try to guess what's going to happen with inflation. What I want you to do is figure out how can you make money on whatever happens. Whether what happens with the economy and no matter what happens with inflation, I want you to find a way to capitalize on that. And the way that you can do that is by understanding the different possibilities that can be coming because there's four general possibilities that can happen. Possibility number one is our economy stays strong, continues to get even stronger, and inflation gets better. E is economy, I is inflation. Option number two is our economy starts to struggle. We see a slowdown in the economy. However, inflation starts to cool and it starts to ease. Number three is our economy stays strong and our economy is strong. However, inflation continues to stay high and it's not going down. And option number four is, well, the economy is slowing down. It's not recovering. It's actually getting worse. And inflation is not going down either. You really want to watch this particular video until the end, because in the end, I'm going to go over my particular opinions about things that I think is going to happen. But you have to understand these four scenarios and understand the best ways for you to capitalize on things that are happening based off of these four scenarios, because you also have to pay attention to the Federal Reserve Bank. Up through now, the Fed is still saying that our economy is very strong, it's very robust, and that our inflation problem is getting better. That yes, the Fed needs to raise interest rates a little bit to fight inflation. However, this inflation problem is not a real systemic problem with our currency. We don't have a real currency problem. The reason why we're still having these high prices and these growing prices is mainly due to the supply chain issues. It's mainly due to the issues in Russia. And it's not because of the money printing and the stimulus through 2020 and 2021. And because of that, that's what's dictating the Fed's policies. Now, based off of this information provided by the Fed, you have different institutions trying to bet what is gonna happen. Like you have Bank of America, who says that these recession fears are overblown and that the economy is about to boom. And then you have Citibank saying that the stock market will not go any lower, and now we're gonna see the markets boom. So they're making their bet over there. And then on the flip side, you have other institutions like well, Wells Fargo, who say that we're gonna see a much bigger recession, if not this year, than next year. Year. On top of that, you also have Bank of America, you also have Deutsche Bank, who also think that we're going to be entering a recession and an economic slowdown. And so they're moving their money based off of that. Somebody will be right and somebody will be wrong. Now for banks, it really doesn't matter if you're right or wrong because you're going to make money either way. You don't have that opportunity. So what you want to do is make sure that you're in a place where if you're not willing to bet on one side, that you can make a more educated decision with your money. That way, no matter what happens, you can come out of whatever is coming a financial winner. Now, typically, whenever you see a slowing economy, like you would see here, that's when the Fed would create more inflation to help stimulate the economy. This could be through cutting interest rates. This could be through quantitative easing. This could be through stimulus checks. All these things create more inflation, but they help stimulate the economy. On the flip side, when you have super high inflation, the Fed would do the opposite. If the Fed is worried about the prices of things going too high, if the Fed is worried about the value of our dollars going down, then they typically reduce inflation. They pull money out of the economy by raising interest rates, by removing quantitative easing, by selling off their balance sheet, and by taking cash literally out of the economy. Now, when you do that, you're reducing the monetary supply to help bring asset prices down. Now, the interesting thing here is you can't do both at the same time. Like you can't create inflation to fight a slowing economy while trying to fight inflation to fight high inflation at the exact same time. You can only do one or the other. This is where you can kind of see that the Fed is in a tough situation because right now, today, the Fed is working to fight inflation. They're raising interest rates. They're selling off their balance sheet. They're trying to take cash out of the economy. What does that do? Well, it slows down inflation 
at the price of also slowing down the economy. Now, here's the question. What is the real root cause of inflation and what is the real state of our economy? Can our economy actually withstand higher interest rates? And is inflation really just being caused by supply chain issues? And is it really just being caused by Russia and Ukraine? Because if, if inflation is not just because of the supply chain issues, if it's not just because of the pandemic, if it's not just because of Russia and Ukraine, and if it is because of the Fed's policies, then the Fed would need to get significantly more aggressive to fight inflation. And if that happens, that's gonna hurt the economy significantly more. But in order for the Fed to do that, they have to believe that the economy would be willing to withstand these higher interest rates because right now, our current Federal Reserve Administration is not going to do what we saw the Fed do in the early 1980s, where they raised interest rates to 20%. Or at least, I don't think that they would do what the Fed did in the early 1980s when getting a mortgage would cost you 18, 19, even close to 20% a year. Because if you took mortgage rates from where they are today and just took them up to 10%, well, you would see a massive shift in the stock market and the housing market. But right now, the Fed is in the path of fighting inflation. That's what they wanna do. But the question is, how bad is real inflation? How bad is the real economy? How strong is the economy? And these are the answers that the Fed does not wanna prematurely answer because if they do and they're wrong, they're scared that that could cause more damage than just by waiting to solve that problem. We saw this happen through 2021 because in 2021, that's when the Fed kept saying that inflation is transitory, it's gonna go away, it's gonna go away. And that's when I kept saying that you need to prepare for higher inflation. And the reason why that was important to understand was because while the Fed might've thought that there's a chance that inflation wasn't just transitory, they did not wanna jump the gun and start fighting inflation in 2021 because if they did, that means they would've stopped the quantitative easing, they would've stopped the money Printing, they would have stopped all the low interest rates in 2021 and that would have slowed down the boom in real estate. That would have slowed down the boom in the stock market. That would have really slowed down these bubbles that we can create, but at the expense of what? Well, if the Fed was wrong, and there was actual temporary inflation, they would have caused a crash in asset prices even though maybe they didn't need to, at least according to the Fed's theories. So what did they do? They kept waiting and waiting and waiting and then it became much worse. We saw eight and a half percent inflation and that's when the Fed said, okay, inflation is not transitory, now we're gonna take steps to fight it. And now here we are today with still inflation very, very high. It's starting to come down a little bit but the Fed is still saying that this inflation is the supply chain, it is Russia, it's Ukraine. And so because of that, we don't need to get super aggressive to fight inflation because what's the alternative? If the Fed did get super aggressive to fight inflation today, then they would for sure cause an economic crash. They would for sure cause an economic downturn. They could even potentially trigger a recession or a depression depending on how aggressive they got. And they don't wanna prematurely do that because they don't wanna gamble. They wanna see what happens and then make a decision. Now the risk with this is what happens if it's too late? but they're hoping that that's not gonna be the case. Now, practically speaking, what does this mean? If the economy slows down and we go into a recession or a depression, that means that asset prices go down and that could create the opportunity for you to come in and buy distressed assets, stocks, real estate, crypto, at a lower price, assuming that you can find a good asset. Now, on the other hand, if inflation does not get better, if we still have very bad inflation, then either the Fed will continue to fight inflation, which would hurt the economy, or they're gonna turn around and say, all right, this is inflation and it is what it is. Inflation in general is good for asset prices. It's good for stocks, real estate, and crypto because people will take their cash and they'll want to dump it into assets because they don't want to hold on to cash anymore. And so if, now hypothetically, if we're in a situation where inflation is still relatively high and then we go into a recession or an economic slowdown and then the Fed wants to start fighting the economy, they want to start fighting the slowdown in the economy, what do they do? Well, then they would stop the fight on inflation and start creating more inflation to help the slowdown in the economy, which then kicks the can down the road because now you don't want to see more companies go under. You don't want to see more bankruptcies. So you flood the markets with more cash, causing asset prices to crash upward, which creates more inflation, but at least you save the economy for the short term. Now, how long can you keep doing this? I don't know, but that is the possibility. If we see inflation, which is still high, while the economy starts to go down, then the Fed might be left with no option but to start stimulating the economy, meaning create more inflation, even though inflation is what's creating this recession. 
So what do you do? Well, you create more inflation to hopefully help the recession, which makes the inflation problem worse. So what does this mean for you more practically? Well, one, own assets instead of just holding on to cash and be prepared to potentially buy assets if they go on sale. Now, if you are looking for an easy way to buy and sell cryptocurrencies or stocks, you could check out our sponsor FTX US because they make it super, super, super simple, not only for you to invest your money into these assets, but for you to dollar cost average your money into these assets. So assuming that, let's say you wanna buy something like Bitcoin. Well, you could go into the FTX app, enter in that you want to buy Bitcoin, and then you can pick the frequency. You can say that you want to buy it once a month. You can say you want to buy it once every two weeks. You can buy it once every day, or you can just buy it once. You pick the frequency, and then it's done. Personally, in my investment strategy, I'm buying stocks every week, and I'm buying a little bit of cryptocurrency every single day. Now, I'm not buying a bunch of the, the little meme coins. I'm buying a few coins that I believe in because I like the technologies, I like the blockchain, and I buy a little bit every single day, whether the market's up or down. I just keep buying and accumulating more of this that I want to own. The reason why I like FTX so much is because their fees are so much lower than pretty much every other major brokerage out there. So if you want to buy something like cryptocurrency, now more of your money can go towards actually buying cryptocurrency instead of just making your brokerage richer and they allow you to buy crypto, you can buy NFTs and soon you'll also be able to buy stocks. And the best part of all is that if you use my link down in the description below and then you enter in the referral code minority, you can win up to $100 worth of crypto and they will also give you a free coin when you trade $10. All you gotta do is click my link down in the description and then enter in the referral code MINORITY with our sponsor FTX. What I don't want you to do is try to get into the game of timing the market where you say, all right, you know what? The market's gonna crash, we're gonna enter a recession and that's when I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna buy stocks at the bottom or I'm gonna wait for the real estate market to crash and that's when I'm gonna come in and buy. I do not want you to try to time the market like this because there's so much uncertainty as to what can happen and this goes to what the Federal Reserve Bank will do. Now, I have my own opinions on what the Fed should do. I think the Fed should be fighting inflation because I think inflation, if inflation gets out of hand, it'll be a much worse problem than going through a recession. We live in this weird kind of economy where we're trying to desensitize ourselves from risk, but the, at the end of the day, sometimes companies need to fail. If you are a company and you are not profitable and you cannot run on your own cash flows and you cannot run profitably, well, there will be times where these types of companies will fail and you cannot just keep flooding the markets with cheap dollars because that will keep more bad companies being made. Sometimes these companies will have to fail. It's painful. It's painful when people lose their jobs, but that's what allows the economy to refresh and that's what allows the economy to grow stronger and create more real innovation instead of just creating innovation run on cheap dollars. You have to build real products and if you don't allow that to happen, you make much bigger bubbles and that's when those bubbles burst, it makes a much bigger crash. And that's what can create real depressions. So we want to avoid that. And so, you know, if you run into these type of inflationary issues, you want to take care of it as soon as possible. Because if you ever run into a currency crisis, that makes everything significantly worse. Because now not only would the economy go into shambles, but now even the currency goes into shambles. And, you know, while we're still the world's reserve currency, we want to make sure that we protect that. We want to make sure we protect the dollar. And we want to make sure we protect the economy. So sometimes that means you have to go through short-term pain and you know, while it's not fun, it's kind of the price that you have to pay for a strong and healthy, long-term sustainable economy. But going back to what I was saying regarding timing the market, it's really hard to try to do this, especially when you have the X factor, the Fed out there, because let's just assume now that we go into a recession, things get bad in the economy, but then instead of continuing to fight inflation, the Fed now creates more quantitative easing. The Fed starts cutting interest rates again. Now this might seem unlikely because the Fed says that they wanna raise interest rates and they wanna fight inflation right now, but if we start to see people losing their jobs, we start to see unemployment go up, well then the Fed could change courses. And you might say, how can the Fed do that even though we have high inflation? Well, it just depends on what's the top priority at that time. Because if the Fed says, all right, you know what, this inflation issue will get worked out by itself, but the economy is the bigger issue right now. We don't want to see Americans lose their jobs. We don't want to see the economy slow down. So then they start stimulating. Well, now you try to desensitize that pain. You get rid of the pain, you print more dollars, but then you create a much bigger bubble. So it is hard to predict what's gonna happen. It's hard to say that the economy or the market is gonna do one thing because the market is gonna depend not just on the economy, but also what the Fed does. And that's a completely different wild card. And it's hard for us to really know what's going on in the economy, the real strength of the economy, because 
We're not going to know that until we start raising interest rates even more because in June, this is when the Fed is now for the first time starting to reduce the size of their balance sheet. We don't know what the effects of that are going to be. That means that the Fed is now finally starting to sell off some of the assets, the trillions of dollars worth of assets, the treasury bonds, the mortgage-backed securities that the Fed started buying up back in 2020. Now, we don't know what the effects of that are going to be just yet. Are they going to slow down the markets? Is that going to slow down the economy? Is that going to change inflation? We don't know just yet. And it's going to take some time for us to really see what's going on in the economy. Of course, I have my own opinions, but we don't know what it's going to do exactly. And the Fed is going to act reactively. They don't act proactively because if they act proactively and they start fighting inflation even more, that would preemptively cause a stock market crash and a real estate crash. And the Fed doesn't want to do that. It goes into politics. I mean, we have a midterm election this year. Do you really think that any presidential administration, any Fed administration would want to see an economic crash just before a midterm election? No. This is why instead of just trying to time the market, I think for the vast majority of people, 99% of people, the majority of people, vast majority of people should have some sort of dollar cost average system set up, whether it's for stocks, whether it's for whatever assets you want to own, maybe even some cryptocurrency, but you got to be smart there. Know how it plays a part in your portfolio. I own crypto, but it's not a major part of my portfolio. It's just in the speculative side of my portfolio. I understand the risks that are involved there. Although I am buying a little bit every single day, I do know the whole size of my portfolio. I invest in my own business and startups. I invest in real estate, I invest in stocks, and then I invest in crypto, and then I invest in physical gold. So I have real diversification in my portfolio and I understand how the different asset classes play a part. But the thing that I'm trying to get across here is that you cannot perfectly time the market, but instead you want to just keep accumulating shares because whether the market's going up or down, you just want to keep building more and more and more. So that means right now, start just dollar cost averaging. It's never too late, never too early. Just keep putting a little bit of money into the markets and then put some extra cash aside. You might want to consider living a little bit smaller now. I know it's hard when you have this type of inflation, but it's so much more important because when times are good or when times are okay, that's when you want to be prepared and start preparing for when times are not good. So start putting some extra cash aside. That way, if things go bad, if the markets start to go down, you have cash to come in and buy even more aggressively. But this also requires you to do your research beforehand, know what it is that you want to own. Are there certain stocks, certain companies that you want to invest in? and you have the cash put aside to do that, then when those assets go down, you can come in and buy. It's the same thing with real estate. If you wanna own real estate, that's fine. Look for the opportunities in your area. Look for distressed real estate. Know what type of returns that you want, and then just wait for the right opportunity. I promised you in the beginning of this video that I would give you my thoughts. And my thoughts are, I think that we have serious issues on the inflation side. Now, I do think that the supply chain is playing a part in the cost of goods. However, the cost of goods are not gonna be fully going up just because of supply chain issues. I think we have a real inflation issue that is not gonna just magically go away. I think the Fed is gonna have to take more serious action to fight inflation. And I think it's gonna be very difficult for inflation to go back down to 2% without this more serious action by the Fed. However, to bring inflation down to the 2% target, which is what the Fed wants. Right now we're around 8% inflation. The Fed wants to bring inflation to 2%. They say that they can do it in the near future without raising interest rates that drastically. I think it's gonna take a lot of work to really bring interest rates down to 2%. And if the Fed stays true to doing that, I think that it would cause a hurt in the stock market. It could potentially cause a crash in the stock market. And I think it would hurt the real estate market. Now, the question here that I don't know the answer to is what is the Fed gonna do when the economy slows down? Will they continue to fight inflation or then will they start supporting the economy? I don't know what they will do. I think that there's a strong chance that if our economy slows down, that the Fed will reverse course and that they will start fighting the economy because that's a more short-term pain. And we're kind of living in this society where we don't want to feel these types of pains. So, you know, there's a big chance that if we see an economic slowdown, that the Fed would then start stimulating instead of continuing to fight inflation because the Fed is, again, reactionary not proactive. And so if they're reactionary, they're gonna wanna wait. They're gonna wanna wait till the supply chain bottlenecks ease. They're gonna wanna wait until they see what happens in Russia and Ukraine. And then they will say, okay, the supply chain issues are better. The Russia and Ukraine war is still going on or a little bit better, whatever it might be. However, our gas prices are still high and the cost of goods are still high. What is the solution now? Maybe we still have 
lingering inflation and this is what we need to fight and that's where the fed might get even more aggressive to fight inflation and if that happens that would hurt the markets and the economy more but again is the fed actually going to do that i have no clue onto that part and if the fed does stay true to fighting inflation then you got to watch asset prices because you got to bet that if interest rates really start to rise asset prices are going to fall if this don't and they start fighting the slowing economy then you can bet the asset prices would fall this is why i don't try to time the market what i'm doing is i'm investing money into my own business i invest my money into market briefs the free financial newsletter that goes out every single day that breaks down what's going on i'm investing the majority of my investment money Money into there and then I'm also passively investing my money into stocks I'm passively investing my money into crypto I'm passively investing my money into physical gold that way now I'm just working to accumulate more and then if something bad were to happen if we were to see a massive market crash well then I would come in and buy more aggressively then but right now my main investment is in my business and I'm not working to try to perfectly time the market I'm not trying to time the market I don't care what's going on with all these little factors I'm paying attention to the data and I'm just working to accumulate more and then if an opportunity arises I'm going to come in and buy but there are real issues on the inflation side that you know we can kick the can down the road maybe a few years maybe another decade who knows how long but eventually these bubbles from the cheap dollars will burst and that will cause pain and you can't desensitize yourself from this sort of pain forever if you enjoyed this video and you want to see the seven best investments you can make in the next market crash that way you never have to worry about money again i already made a video covering that and you can watch that video by clicking this button right over there thank you for watching and as always keep hustling uber instagram whatsapp all of these companies were created during a recession